Welcome to the behind the scenes for Sleeping With Clouds. If you haven't seen it yet, go watch it before you watch this. A little over a year ago, I decided to make a short film about two people who wake up after a one night stand to find their bed mysteriously floating in the sky, and they have to set aside their differences to find a way down. This was my most ambitious project yet. We had little to no budget, a small crew, and we were all doing something we never done before. Shoot almost an entire short film on a blue screen stage. And here's how we did it. To film a movie that is mostly shot on a blue screen stage, everything has to be planned out pretty meticulously, especially if you're doing all the VFX yourself. Everything was planned and tested before we got to the shoot, because I didn't want anything left up to chance. We tested what the best tracker markers would be, the best lenses, the best camera that we had access to, and even the best color screen we would need, and blue turned out to actually be the better option. We also needed to know exactly what we were filming, so I actually, in Blender, did an animatic of the film. So that means I have an entire crudely animated version of the film that includes me doing all the voices for the entire film. I'm so hungry I could eat a bird. You can't eat birds. You chickens, bats. Not sparrows. <laughs> this was a godsend to communicate what I want to the crew because most of them never filmed on a blue screen stage before. So the goal was just to show that to them and then they can understand what I'm going for. But even when the movie was finished, I got texts from people going like, oh, I, I get it now. So it still took them a while, but having an animatic that shows you every shot you need, every setup, how the story evolves is really important when you're shooting on a blue screen stage. For the blue screen itself, our GoFundMe didn't succeed as well as we'd hoped. We opted to shoot the film with the cheapest things we could find. So instead of renting a blue screen stage, we used a studio that we had access to for free and used a DIY blue screen inside it instead. This consisted of two 10 foot by 20 foot blue screens, a few PVC pipes and connectors, a handful of clamps, and a few C stands to hold it all up. We made sure to also bring a steamer so we can steam out the wrinkles in the screen. I think in total it cost about like $100 to do the whole thing, which beats paying $1,000 per day at a blue screen studio. Lighting the blue screen was pretty simple. You just have to make sure it's evenly lit. We used false colors on the Blackmagic Pocket 4K to do that. We never even really got it 100% right. There was still some darker parts of the screen, but I knew I could pull a key from it if it wasn't too bad, so I wasn't too worried about it. To light the actors, we actually used a few tungsten 1Ks that were aligning the perimeter of the set. Only one was on at a time to act as the sun. The reason why we had multiple ones was we had so many shots to get through. It was easier just to turn on one that's on the other side of the room than moving one light all around. That would just take time. So it was just a way to cut down lighting times for each take. Actually, the animatic was super handy to light the film because the animatic had correct, accurate lighting because the film's sun actually is in the position that it would be at that time of day. And I did that in the animatic just to make sure everything was clear. So all we did was look at the animatic, see where the light was hitting on the face and just followed it. We, we didn't have to think about it, you know? We, we don't get confused when we have to flip the shot or something. It was already done for us, so our little dumb brains can, <laughs> can think about something else. Because we filmed with tungsten lights, everything was really orange in camera, but all we did was just white balance it to 3200 Kelvin, and then it looked like daylight. And then as the evening went down, we didn't have to gel the lights. All we did was just move the white balance to fit however warm we wanted the scene. So it worked out so we didn't have to do that much extra work. The fight in the cloud was a little bit of a different thing. Because they're inside a cloud, you wouldn't really have any harsh lighting. So we just got a huge diffusion overhead and we shot lights through it. And we got this nice, even soft lighting. I don't know how terribly accurate it is, but I don't think many people have had fights on a storm cloud. So I, I think we're fine. It can be hard for actors to act in front of a blue screen because they don't really know what's going on. But with the two actors I had, I already knew them. I've worked with them previously on projects. So I actually wrote the film with them in mind, meaning I just played to their strengths in the script. So I knew that they can hit every emotion that I wanted. The film was mostly about performances and nailing those beats, but when we did the rehearsals, they pretty much nailed it right off the gate. And all I had to do as a director was just nudge them into the way I wanted it. And that was pretty much it. But weirdly enough, the hardest thing to direct was how to do the fart noise that he does. <laughs> Close. Okay. More like, but you have to get a high pitch like. <laughs> it has to be 
Yeah. Hitting yeah, the high uh, note uh, at the end. It's uh <laughs> like <Tim Allen. laughs> But I'm very happy with their performances and they did fantastic. The film had over 250 VFX shots. It was a huge undertaking for me. This is the most VFX shots I've ever had in any other project. And I also did it all myself. So that added an extra layer of like, oh, dauntingness. Most of the film was done in Blackmagic Fusion and Adobe After Effects. This was actually the first time I used Fusion and I learned it because node compositing is a little bit better when you have a lot of shots in comparison to layered based compositing, which is what After Effects is. With a node compositor, you can kind of composite your shot and make it look good, duplicate all those effects, and then put your next shot into the pipeline and it's pretty much already done. So that just made it so much faster when we had a bunch of shots to do. I also did a lot of the effects and after effects, don't get me wrong, just because I know it more and I'm more comfortable in it. So I did more of the things that were like the harder kind of shots in after effects. But usually if the scene had a lot of shots in it, that was done in fusion. But if it had a few shots in it, I would do it in after effects. We shot everything in 4K and then I down it to 1080p because doing 4K VFX shots for 250 shots would have killed me um, and my computer. And then at the very end of the process, I AI upscaled it to 4K and nobody's the wiser. Nobody cares. Resolution really doesn't matter. <laughs> For those sky backgrounds, I actually used a software called Terragen, which was the first time I ever used it or even heard of it. It's a software that specializes in making terrain and clouds. So it was perfect for what I needed it for. I just personally liked it because it made the clouds look really realistic and nice. For each scene, I would just make the clouds look the way I wanted it to and put the sun in the correct position. And then I would just basically render out one frame of each angle of the shot and then I would bring that into my compositing software. It was just easier doing something like that with a fully CGI environment versus finding stock photos that would work well because I wanted everything to be consistent for each shot. So I, I was too worried that the sky would look a little bit different in one shot or the clouds would have the wrong lighting or something like that. So it was easier to do it in CG. I believe the only stock photos I used for the entire piece were when the camera was looking down towards the surface of the earth. That was using stock photos I found from textures.com, I believe. Terrigen never made those shots look that good, uh, like looking right down, so I just did stock photos for those, and they turned out pretty good. To do those wide establishing shots, I used the phone app Polycam to 3D scan both the actors in their costumes, and I did that in even lighting conditions. I cleaned them up at Blender and I rigged them using Mixamo. The bed was a different story. I couldn't really photo scan the bed because there's too many intricate parts in it. So what I did was I took it outside and during a cloudy day, took a bunch of pictures, and then I also LiDAR scanned it. I brought the LiDAR scan into Blender and I used it as a base to model it and I got the right dimensions of what the bed is in real life because LiDAR scan has size data size data it has the correct size data I, I don't know how to say that everything is like proportionally correct and then i also used the photos as references and i used them to texture the model as well i'm not much of a modeler but whenever you're just following exactly what you see it's much easier for me i then added a mattress which is just a cube <laughs> with some rounded edges and i used cloth simulation to add the blanket for some scenes i used the ai motion capture website Plask where I fed a video of me doing what I think the actor should be doing and then it spits out motion capture data that you can apply to your characters and it was great and I just had to clean it up a bit but I just love the world we live in where I can just videotape myself and then I can make something animate from that and that shit's free the photo scan of Aaron was a little bit messed up <laughs> so I just made sure the camera was wide enough so you couldn't see her <laughs> I could have rescanned, but I knew it was gonna be far enough away where it wouldn't matter I'm lazy it's is what you're learning about me right now I color graded the film using DaVinci Resolve and I tried to make it feel like it was an older piece of media, like a 16 millimeter sort of thing, adding glows and halation. Something I used was 16 millimeter emulation plugin called CinePrint 16, and that helped me get the look that I wanted faster. Having it look like this did two things for me. It made it feel more storybook, which is kind of the vibe I was going for, and it hid some of those harsh edges of the effects. It was just a way to say, hey, if this looks fake to you, I did it on purpose, and <laughs> it's stylistic, which maybe wasn't the case. Maybe it's just because I'm not that great at visual effects. It's just to cover my ass, truthfully. <laughs> 
I also added film grain from Ezra Cohen's 35 millimeter grain pack, and that added this beautiful natural grain that I really enjoyed. Sound is the most important thing, especially when you're shooting on something like a blue screen. I added in wind and ambiance, which really helped sell the loneliness that these two characters are having in the sky. I used Adobe Audition to mix and sound design the film. I don't know if that's what everyone else has used. It's the one that I use and it works perfectly fine for me. But doing sound is always the hardest part for me because I'm super particular on what sounds need to be there. My favorite things that I added were things like little bed squeaks for comedic timing. You don't know my name? I never got yours either. Or even bird cause. I found something. My phone? No. Jeremy! <gasps> what? To help the comedy and help pace the film. At the end of the day, I'm not a sound person, but it's always the thing that matters the most in anything I do. This was a huge undertaking, and I learned more doing this film than any other film that I've ever worked on. It was an awesome experience, even though there was moments where I wanted to tear my hair out. I'm extremely proud of the film. Even though it was a risk to make, I'm glad I made it. And if this video is at all discouraging you to make a blue screen film or a film that you might not know if you want to make because you think it's impossible, don't. Don't let it. If you take anything from this video, make it this. It's better to make something and fail than sitting around thinking you can't make something. Please go and watch the film again if you've watched it once and share it. It would mean a lot to me. Hope you have a good day. I think that's good. Forget about your worries, they only bring strife. Forget about your troubles.